Okay, in this video we are going to solve an optimization problem that involves finding the optimal route where there are two different rates, and in this particular case, uh, one of them is the rate at which someone can swim, and one is the rate at which someone can walk. Uh, so let's take a look at the problem. So, a woman is in the water one mile off the coast and wants to get to a town three miles down a rocky coast. She needs to swim to the shore and then walk to the town. Um, and we want to know to what point X should she swim along the shoreline um, to, so a point along the shoreline, um, so that the time it takes to get to town is a minimum. She can swim at two miles per hour and she can walk at four miles per hour. So the first thing we probably want is a picture. So it kind of looks like this. Um, so there's your town. And then we know that this distance is three. She's going to swim that distance. Um, and then she's one mile uh, off the coast. So this is what I have for a picture so far. Usually when, when you solve this, this is a famous problem, when you solve this particular problem, usually the picture is given. Um, but if it's not, this is what it works out to. Uh, I'm going to call this distance here x, which makes this distance 3 minus x. And then uh, we have a right triangle here, so I can actually figure out how far she's going to swim. She's going to end up swimming uh, the hypotenuse of that right triangle, which is the square root of 1 plus x squared. Okay, so that's, that takes care of kind of labeling up the picture. Uh, this is really just a distance equals rate times time problem, except we're trying to find a minimum time. So instead of using distance equals rate times time, we want to rearrange that to time equals distance over rate. And what's happening here is there's going to be two different times. There's um, a t total, and that's going to be the amount of time that she swims plus the amount of time that she's on land walking. So when we write our equation overall, we're going to get t equals. So it's going to be the distance that she swims. And then we need to find the rate she can swim. But if you look back at the problem, she can swim at 2 miles per hour. So that's going to be over 2. So that's distance swimming over rate swimming plus uh, the distance that she walks, which is going to be 3 minus x, over we need to find the rate at which she can walk, which in the problem is 4 miles per hour. So we have this. So uh, now we want to do the calculus. So all that's just kind of the setup. Uh, so the I'm going to move to another page and copy this again. Oh, yeah, no, I should mention, uh, in this problem, it makes sense that the value of x should be between 0 and 3 because the town is 3 miles away. Um, and it doesn't really make sense for her to swim kind of in the opposite direction or to swim past the town and then kind of walk back. So uh, 0 to 3 is kind of the natural domain for this thing. All right. So we copied this problem, uh, and we're going to now take the derivative, because that's how you uh, optimize things. Or at least that's how you find the value that does optimize something. So dt dx is. So I'm going to pull out the 1 half from this first thing. So that's the 2 from the denominator there. And now I have 1 plus x squared to the 1 half, so it's going to be 1 half the quantity 1 plus x squared to the negative 1 half, and then chain rule, so times 2x. And then... Uh, plus the derivative of 3 minus x over 4 is just negative 1 fourth, because that's actually linear. Um, so that's our derivative. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. So the 2 from 2x cancels with one of the 1 halves. Um, so I end up with just x over 2 root 1 plus x squared. And then minus 1 fourth. And then whenever we're trying to optimize something, we need the critical point. So we need to figure out where dt dx equals 0. Or is undefined, but there's no place that it's undefined. So we actually just need where it's 0. So setting that equal to 0 um, looks like this. I'm going to move over here. So I'm going to move the 1 fourth to the other side. Just add 1 fourth to both sides. And I'm going to cross multiply here. So 4x equals 2 root 1 plus x squared. There's a 2 on both sides, so I'm actually just going to cancel that out just to simplify things. And now I have a linear thing equals a, a square root. So the way you solve this is you square both sides, and then you worry about getting extraneous solutions, um, which actually, it's not going to happen in this case, but it could have happened. So now I have 4x squared plus, uh, equals 1 plus x squared, so I can go through and solve this. 3x squared is 1, so x squared is 1 third, which means that x is either plus or minus radical 1 third, but if you remember, we said that x is going to have to be between 0 and uh, 3, which means the negative value is just kind of kicked out. So the value we're looking at is x is the square root of 1 third. But you might want to rationalize that. 
So x is radical 3 over 3. Okay, so that's the only critical point that we have to deal with. The other two points, 0 and 3, are endpoints, and that's going to be relevant when we try to test intervals. So we have, this is our derivative, and we got x equals radical 3 over 3 is what we're trying to test. So I'm going to make a sign chart for this, and on the sign chart, I'm going to put 0, radical 3 over 3, and 3. And this is a sign chart for dt dx. So now I want to figure out um, positives and negatives. So if you think about it, this is actually the only critical point. Because we have to somehow plug this into the derivative that we got, and that seems like it's going to be hard. Um, but that's the only critical point. Uh, so this is not a critical point, so there's not actually going to be a sign change there, which means we can actually plug 0 in. And the same is true for 3, because uh, the only other critical point is negative radical 3 over 3. So we know there's not going to be a sign change at 0. There's not going to be a sign change at 3. So if I test 0, that tells me what's happening between 0 and radical 3 over 3 as well. So I'm actually going to test 0. And if I test 0, I obviously get negative 1 fourth. Um, so when I test 0, I get negatives. And then if I test positive 3, um, I get 3 over uh, 2 times radical, well, whatever I get is bigger than negative 1 fourth. Um, so this, so it goes from, so the derivative, don't say it when you talk about this, uh, the derivative goes from negative to positive, so let's write this up. So since dt dx changes from negative to positive, at x equals radical 3 over 3. We know that t must have a minimum when x equals radical 3 over 3, right? So that's the first derivative test. And so to answer the question, we want to aim for um, x equals radical 3 over 3. And if you remember, uh, all of this is based on this picture. So we're trying to make x be radical 3 over 3. That's going to minimize the amount of time it takes her to get from her point a mile offshore to the actual town. All right, so that's a, a very common problem that you solve with optimization. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.